I'll start by saying, please uh, permit me a little bit of levity in this uh, presentation. Um, we're going to talk about um, the following topics. I have no industry relationships. I will comment that um, I am very used to being in a room full of cardiologists presenting one point of view. And you'll see there, um, I was a token cardiac surgeon on this uh, guideline statement. So I'm used <laughs> to uh, this situation. We're here to compare PCI versus uh, cabbage. And um, I'll posit first by saying this is to some extent uh, comparing apples to oranges. These are very different things. But uh, let's try to do this. We're going to start with this. This is cabbage. So um, Lima to LED. Wow, well, sorry. Uh, Lima to LED. This saves your life. This is a graph that has unique anatomy and physiology. This graft has uh, an intact internal lamina, uh, intact internal elastic lamina, which uh, prevents the formation of atherosclerosis. It secretes nitric oxide and prostaglandins. This graft can stay open forever. This is life prolonging. So that's on one hand. And on the other hand, you have a, a uh, therapy that uh, was recently shown to be as good as placebo. This is the levity part. And um, um, <laughs> that's gotten into a variety of magazines saying that uh, our heart stents, the Botox of cardiology. New data on blood flow and big fraud. So we could probably just stop there. Um, <laughs> so if you have atherosclerosis, you can do angioplasty, you can do stenting, but you can see here, you get instant restenosis. And uh, this is what it looks like. So um, how about going to some of the literature? Okay, so some um, sort of more broad uh, comparisons, not necessarily focusing on diabetes. This is, uh, I'll just pick two very recent articles that uh, came out uh, within months. So this is um, uh, from Shuichiro Takanashi's group. He is the uh, highest volume heart surgeon in Japan, and uh, they, looked at a five-year period, and they found 238 pairs that they uh, propensity matched, resulting in 4.7 grafts versus 2.8 stents. So a fair amount of revascularization, and 30-day mortality was excellent. And then they followed these patients out for many years. And you can see here that uh, comparing second-generation drug-eluting stents, uh, PCI versus cabbage, cabbage had a much lower likelihood of MACE. This is a study out of Pittsburgh. This is still in press. This is 844 propensity match pairs over an eight year period at their center, showing a notable difference in survival. Better with cabbage than with PCI. So again, not necessarily focusing on diabetes. This is just overall. Let's go to uh, a classic study that everyone here is very familiar with. So if you take syntax and you look at the diabetes subgroup, which comprised 25% of the overall study group, uh, five-year risk of death, MI, stroke, or repeat revascularization was markedly higher with PCI than with cabbage. Let's uh, skip that. We'll go in and focus on um, uh, multi-vessel revasc in uh, um, patients with diabetes. So this is part of freedom. And uh, this is 1,900 patients. And uh, the five-year rate for um, uh, MACE was uh, much higher in uh, um, PCI versus cabbage. You can see here death, uh, MI, or stroke, higher for PCI than cabbage. So let's just uh, read the uh, conclusion out loud. For patients with diabetes and advanced coronary artery disease, cabbage was superior to PCI in that it significantly reduced rates of death and MI. That's uh, the New England Journal of Medicine. Okay, how about uh, um, Jack? We're gonna show several Jack articles since we're here as part of, uh, um, we're here related to uh, ACC. So this was an article two years ago focused on um, uh, patients with uh, diabetes and multivessel disease. And I'll just focus on the central illustration. As you know, these central illustrations in Jack are outstanding. They give you sort of the whole message in, in one figure. And you can see there that um, uh, all co cause mortality 
is notably higher in PCI than in cabbage out uh, over a many year period in this, uh, this uh, study. This is the uh, Swedish group, the Swedish National Registry. And this is combining um, diabetes and uh, LV dysfunction. And uh, this is in Alberta, Canada. So I'm jumping around the world a little bit. Uh, we've been in Asia, we're in Sweden, we're in North America, and now we're up in Ca uh, Canada and showing you uh, 869 pairs of patients um, looking at mace, cabbage versus uh, PCI. And again, better results for uh, cabbage and PCI. And uh, this is uh, um, something that just came out. So this is sort of stepping back again from the focus on diabetes but there will be a diabetes point in this uh, article. This is published in Lancet. This is a, a meta-analysis of um, 11 RCTs of PCI versus cabbage, and uh, the requirements are that every uh, center had to have a heart team to evaluate these patients and that there had to be at least one year follow-up. There were 11 studies, 11,500 patients, and uh, this is the uh, result. So a two-point uh, survival benefit for cabbage over PCI over these um, 11 randomized controlled trials and uh, um, more pronounced uh, results in the diabetic and the high syntax score subgroups. So not very surprising, but uh, again, just overall a survival benefit to cabbage and then even more pronounced when you have diabetics. This is an interesting topic. Uh, I just saw this. This just came out in Jack. Um, this is a review article written by a group of surgeons and cardiologists, and uh, you know they sort of look at uh, a variety of the um, uh, the randomized trials. I won't, don't want to go into these trials so much. I'm sort of bringing this up more to just direct you to this this uh, review paper. But this is a very interesting concept that they talk about inside of this paper, and um, this is basically describing the fact that the majority of MIs are caused by plaque rupture of non-flow-limiting lesions. You know, this was discussed earlier this morning about, um, uh, for example, a variety of um, 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 studies using uh, coronary CT and, and uh, ACS res resulting from uh, non-limiting um, lesions. Uh, this is basically making the point that PCI is a therapy specifically directed at flow-limiting lesions, whereas cabbage is a therapy that's directed at those lesions as well as grafting far enough distally that you've essentially gone beyond many of the potential sites for plaque rupture. This is their hypothesis, a hypothesis uh, uh, posed by uh, that group of cardiologists and surgeons that might some of the benefits that we see long term in terms of MACE, in terms of survival, favoring cabbage over PCI be due to the fact that you're actually grafting beyond areas that can cause MI, that uh, PCI does not actually protect you from those other lesions. So they did this little study here where they looked at uh, MI locations, which were very proximal, so that's distance along the LAD, and uh, where the grafts for cabbages were inserted. And you can see the vast majority of locations for graft insertion, typically Lima to LAD, are far beyond the area where MI locations occur. And remember, those MI locations may not necessarily be where the stent is. So you would be protected by the cabbage, the Lima to LAD, against all of these MIs, whereas you would not be protected by a stent. So this may be part of the explanation. So it's a very interesting concept. I, I would really uh, advise you to read that. And then uh, the last section of this talk is really how to enhance coronary bypass grafting. So we took a, a look at all cabbage done in California over quite a period of time and focused on multi-vessel coronary bypass grafting. And the bottom line is we showed that MACE was improved when uh, MACE was less when you use multi-arterial grafting and that the hazard curve, the uh, benefit, actually didn't cross the uh, uh, unity line until somewhere in your 70s. So that uh, even 75-year-olds may actually benefit from multi-arterial grafting. So one question that comes up all the time with diabetics is can you use bilateral IMAs in diabetics? And when I was training, I was taught 
a diabetic? No, you can't use it because the sternum will fall apart. Well, it turns out the sternum doesn't necessarily have to fall apart. And uh, with appropriate wound care, uh, potentially skeletonization, perhaps uh, prolonged use of antibiotics, uh, very focused uh, uh, attention to the xiphosternal junction, you actually can use bilateral IMAs in diabetics, even on um, um, high insulin dose dependent diabetics, and it, could, it, it actually can work out. So the one uh, uh, thing that you see here is the in-hospital mediastinitis or sternal dehiscence rates were statistically no different between single IMA and bilateral IMA. So I think many of the surgeons and surgical groups now are using bilateral IMAs even in diabetics. What about uh, other arterial grafts? Well, we can take radials without having to open up the entire arm now. So you can just have a tiny little incision down in your wrist and a tiny incision up near your elbow. So old incision approach, new approach. And then what about uh, a variety of configurations? So these are just a few patients that uh, I did multi-arterial grafting. These were all done off pump with a no aortic touch technique. So the panel on the upper left is uh, a straightforward REMA to RCA and LIMA to LAD. The one on the top right is a LIMA being sequenced to a diagonal and then it will be placed on the LAD. The one on the bottom left is uh, Lima to LED and a REMA brought underneath the aorta and pulmonary artery and attached to an obtuse marginal. And then the one at the very uh, bottom right is a, a Lima to LED and then a radial taken off of the Lima to a diagonal, an OM1 and an OM2. So you can imagine using these various permutations, you can do cabbage times four, five, six, all arterial, all pedicle based, no aortic touch. This is a very good operation. And if you run out of arterial grafts, uh -huh. then you can try this. So in Japan and in parts of Asia, it's very popular to use the gastroepiploic artery as your third artery as opposed to the radial. And uh, I've done this a few times, but in the U.S., it's a little different. When you take out the uh, gastroepiploic artery, you can see up there, that's one of my patients, and you can see the stomach with the various ties on it. There's a lot of fat inside the uh, abdomen of Americans. And the gastroepiploic is a lot harder to harvest. I've seen various videos of uh, harvesting in uh, Japan, and it's very easy. It looks like you're just taking down a lima. There's no fat inside. <laughs> so um, this is a potential better overall strategy for cabbage. One artery, two arteries using a bilateral IMA, three arteries using radial. If you want to go to four, you can use a gastroepiploic. And then the latest thing that uh, we're doing is the lateral circumflex femoral artery descending branch. This can be harvested almost via the same incision you see for a saphenous vein harvest incision, just slightly anterior, a little bit deeper, but uh, it can be harvested. And you can get several centimeters of uh, conduit for an artery. And then whether or not to do this off pump or through uh, uh, no aortic manipulation techniques is another issue. And then I talked about this uh, at length on Thursday using minimally invasive approaches facilitated by robotics and then using left chest approaches to put on Lima to LEDs and then multi-vessel grafting. So let's finish up with a little summary. So I started by saying that this is somewhat a comparison of apples to oranges, but uh, realistically it's more a comparison of two different moving targets. Obviously I'm not qualified to talk about the first, second, third, fourth generation drug eluding stents and then all of the new CTO techniques, but that, you know, PCI is of course a moving target and I showed you how cabbage is an evolving and moving target. So we're really comparing two somewhat different things, but still a valid uh, exercise. And then uh, I would refer you to the uh, ACC uh, multi-society uh, uh, appropriate use criteria and uh, again there's the uh, uh, one token surgeon here, Peter Smith. And uh, I just wanted to highlight for three vessel disease, you can see here, if you just go comparing PCI to cabbage in a variety of uh, settings, uh, cabbage, at least in this document, is more appropriate for use in virtually every single setting and even more so in any of the horizontal lines where diabetes is uh, mentioned. So the uh, societies, our national societies, all say that cabbage is better than uh, PCI. And uh, I will finish with 10 commandments. Some facts, some fallacies, and some fads. So first one, stents are Botox. <laughs> Number two, cabbage will go away. 
Three, we are comparing moving targets. Four, cabbage is better in diabetes, high t syntax scores, LV dysfunction. And notice I leave a, com a comma at the end there because there are several mm -hmm. other uh, categories where uh, cabbage may be better. That a uh, uh, recent uh, meta-analysis of multiple RCTs published in The Lancet sh with over 11,000 patients shows that cabbage gives you a 2% survival benefit over five years, and that's even greater in diabetics that uh, there is a heart collateralization concept here that uh, may be valid with cabbage, that uh, there is a survival benefit with multi-arterial grafting and that bilateral ITAs can be used safely in diabetics, that uh, there may be some uh, uh, benefit with uh, minimal invasive cabbage, and that the ACC appropriate use criteria summarizes all of these issues very elegantly. And then finally, number 10, Harvard says that red wine might be good for your heart, so that uh, we all have to go out there and test this <laughs> hypothesis today. Okay, thank you very much.